Welcome everybody. Um, we hope that you were inspired uh, by the terrific movie, um, There Was No Silence. We have with us uh, today, Joe Allen, the director uh, of the movie, as well as Anki Spitzer, uh, who was featured in the movie as well. And um, uh, sh for the movie purposes, she's known as uh, the, uh, in some ways, the widow of Andre Spitzer, who was the fencing coach. But more importantly, uh, frankly, over the last 10 years, uh, she's become uh, Anki Spitzer, uh, a really good friend of mine and Joe's and the Rockland community. So uh, welcome, Anki and Joe. We're happy you're able to join us. And uh, I'm going to turn over uh, the initial conversation to Joe Allen. Thank you very much, David. And thank you to everybody for taking the time to watch this film. It was a, a very special film on a topic that has been uh, uh, so long in, in, in uh, trying to be made right. And uh, we had an amazing time making it. And I hope you got a lot out of it. Hope you learned something that perhaps you didn't know <laughs> and realized what could happen when you stay with it, when you stay with something for 50 years and don't give in. So let me start right off the bat. I'll be asking questions of both Anki and, and of David. I'll start with Anki. Um, it, it, let me ask you a general question. Uh, and that is why, why have you continued to fight for the moment of silence, minute of silence for, for almost five decades now? Because I think I owed it to the, the 11 athletes. I owed it to my husband, certainly, but also to his teammates. Because it cannot be when something terrible like this happened. It was like an opening shot of international terrorism. And that the world just goes on because they're only from Israel and they're only Jews and they're not going to do anything about it. And I felt very strongly that something had to be done, not only in memory of them, but also to warn the world and to show the athletes that they should behave in a different way, that they should take different things, values with them, because that's what the Olympics are all about. But the door remained closed and we couldn't do anything, but we didn't let, we didn't let go. We went on and on and on and on. And I'm happy to talk to you today, but you know, it's, it has been a long and lonely journey until I met you guys in Rockwood. <laughs> Well, it, there have been a lot of moments that you've had in, in all the Olympic Games since. And you, you uh, indicated in the film what some of those tough moments were of, of being turned down, being rejected, being, being pushed away. Out of all the 50 years, and notwithstanding those first terrible days afterwards, what would you say was the most difficult moment during that time? You mean during the fight? During the fight, yeah. I think, you know, the rejection and the humiliation and the, and it, it was, I felt all the time, it's not fair what you're doing. It's not fair that you're not doing this for the Israeli athletes. And, it, you know, I felt upset, but the most, the most difficult time, I think, was in, in London, because it was now or never. And uh, it, I knew that if this is not going to work, you know, that's almost the end of it. How can we continue? So that was a very difficult, but also afterwards a very rewarding time to see how many people got involved and what the community of Rockland did and how you guys, you and David and, and, and other people from, from Rockland, how they pushed forward and they also never gave up, you know. But the difficult part was, London, because it was either going to be or not to be. Well, speaking of London, that was the, the uh, in, in many ways, the culmination of a great effort that went on uh, with many people, including JCC Rockland and, and uh, of, of David, with David as well, and, and uh, the, everyone who was involved. Uh, you became very close with the people in Rockland County in the, in the, actually year, year and a half, if not two years, leading up to that trip to London, where we had the press conference and where we delivered the petition to, to Jacques Roja. Uh, tell, us, tell us about your relationship with the Rockland County community. First of all, you know, I, I didn't know anybody. 
And then David came over, to, you know, he, he contacted me and he said that he wanted to do something. I, I couldn't believe it that on the other side of the ocean, there were people that also wanted to do something and wanted to help out and give us support because we never got support. Nobody supported us. Uh, and I'm talking about us, uh, that Silano Romano and myself, you know, we just had to go on our own to all the Olympics and before that. And there was not, never anyone who, who, who came with us or supported us. So to find some group of people, a community on the other side of the ocean, willing to come with us was amazing. So when I came over the first time, I met incredible people who were all very dedicated. I met, first of all, well, of course, David, and I met you, and I met so many other good people of the community that I was amazed. I was amazed about what they were willing to do. And the culmination of it all was, of course, when we went to, to London, you know, when you guys, they, you organized the, the press conference, you know, you, you guys organized the, the, the petition that we are going to, to give, you know. It, it was for me, it was unbelievable that, the, that other people came along with us and we made big impact much more impact than we ever made before of course david you uh i remember when you started this and you had set a pretty lofty goal when all of this began uh, what was it inside of you that made you believe that some of the things that we were advocating jcc rockman was advocating what made you believe that it was even possible to achieve well, in many ways, I didn't know what, it, what, what was possible to achieve uh, because you can have a lofty idea, but you have no idea whether or not you'll be able to accomplish anything on that idea. And uh, to be quite frank, I learned a lot of lessons from this process. Uh, I learned that, you know, after seeing what happened when I was 13 years old, growing up in Newton, Massachusetts, and having participated uh, with the JCC Maccabi Games, where, quite frankly, because of JCC Association, always remembering the athletes, it was just motivational and inspiring that we should do something to try to support uh, a wrong, an unjust wrong uh, that had never been addressed. So the reality is, is we had no idea what kind of an impact we could make, but the best lesson for the whole uh, situation was if you set your sights high um, and you work towards the goal and uh, quite frankly, you have a little bit of luck along the way and a lot of people stepping in to help, you can accomplish anything. And, you know, the one point that I would make and, you know, I, I, I can't uh, walk in Anki's shoes. Uh, the shoes are too big from my perspective. Because for me, it's remarkable what she and Alana and the family have done to remember the, uh, their loved ones and the 11 that passed away, passed away, wrong word to use, who were massacred at the Olympics. Um, I found that London, in many ways, at least from my perspective, really was the beginning. Although, you know, ultimately we did not get a minute of silence in London. I think the impact of what actually took place was extremely powerful and in many ways, uh, just as important of that minute of silence. And so although Anki said it was either somewhat do or die in London, I think uh, if you ask Anki um, that uh, based upon her future relationship that she's established with Thomas Bach and the International Olympic Committee, that we're only actually at the beginning of what we hope will be a minute of silence going forward. David, let me ask you this. It has been said that nothing happens in a vacuum and, and few of us can do anything on our own. It does take a village to accomplish any, any large endeavor. Uh, how did you create and maintain enthusiasm in the Rockland County community for what we were trying, what you were trying to accomplish? Well, it's very interesting. When we decided to host the JCC Maccabi Games in 2010, you know, Rockland is a bedroom community, smallest county in New York State, uh, a community that attended the JCC Maccabi Games for more than 20 years in other North American communities. And in many cases, the 
people in Rockland felt that we could never ever host the games ourselves. And I've always believed that you can, whatever, you know, there's no limit to what you can accomplish. It's only limited by your imagination. So the reality was it would have been enough as, 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 as we say, it would have been enough if we would have simply just hosted the JCC Maccabi games and held a basic set of games. That alone was inspiring. Uh, that alone was inspiring. It was inspiring to work with people like yourself, Joe, and uh, people like uh, Alan Elkin and Arthur Wagner at Active International, who stood with us for the JCC Maccabi Games, but also stood with us in the making of this movie and in coming to London, et cetera. So um, it was, every, along the way, it was just inspiring. Every person we met along the way, whether it would be Anki or uh, her, her daughter Anuk, or if it was uh, uh, people in Israel, DNI alone, uh, who stepped up to write the letter to the uh, IOC requesting for the minute of silence for the first time ever publicly by somebody in the Israeli government. Everything was so exciting that when I look actually at the movie that you made, it could have been 12 hours long because there was so much excitement in everything we did. Anki, tell me a little bit, and you began to reference it before, and the, the trip to London, which really, you, you called it a, a remarkable thing, so did David, and I, I would echo that. When you got to that meeting, tell us about uh, the culmination of your relationship with IOC President Jacques Roja. Give some color to what we saw in the film about uh, how that meeting went down and what he and he was all about and your and Ilana's relationship with him. Well, Jack Roche is a Belgian guy and I'm originally from Holland and, you know, and speaking also Flemish. So for me, I thought it was, you know, I'm going to meet him again because I met him quite a few times. But in London, I met him and I found out I, I'm dealing with a coward. He didn't dare because a lot of the members of the International Olympic Committee were from Arab countries and he didn't dare to push forward this, this minute of silence. He was afraid. And, and the meeting itself, I will never forget it. You know, it was like, I, I felt like it, I'm, I'm fighting for my <laughs> life and for the life of my kids and for everybody just to convince this guy that he has to do this minute of silence and let me go home. I said, you, you could have done it many, many years ago and you would have never heard from me again, you know, but because you're not doing it, you know, we keep coming because we will not take it. And if we can not make it, you know, our children will come after you and the children of, are my children. They will come until you do the right thing. And we, I couldn't get it through his head and he didn't want to, uh, he, he said to me, you know, my hands are tied, which he, he tried to tell me that, you know, because of all the Arab members in the uh, International Olympic Committee, he could not do anything. But, you know, I told him, your hands were hung out tight, the hands of my husband, his teammates, and also their legs, they are tied. They were tied there, you know, so, and he was not going to do it. And I, I never forget when he moved over the table and he said to me, I'm not going to do it. I, I thought, I'm going to <laughs> jump over the table and grab the guy. But I, I just told Tilana, let's get out of here. And we went out of there. And he afterwards, I heard he felt very bad about that meeting because you came along and David came along and, and Steve and we, we presented the, the, the petition, you know, which was quite impressive, I would say, you know, with 111,000 signatures in just no time that you guys in Rockland organized this, this petition, you know, to see something like this and also the commentaries, I, I must have done something to him, but he was too cowardly to, to, to make the step. And afterwards, you know, we had the meeting, our memorial meeting, and I told him, you know, that shame on you. <laughs> David, how about you? From, you were there from your perspective. What did that feel like? This is not an, this is not an environment that, you ordinarily 
participate in. This was the international stage. I remember all the security that we had to get through just to get up to his office and all the jars of candy all around and all the people walking around. And, <laughs> and, and, and we were in that meeting. What did it feel like to you? Well, you know, again, um, what was remarkable to me, Joe, to be uh, quite frank, is it felt like, it felt like for me that the decision was made. The decision was made before the meeting um, because, you know, from my perspective, he would have orchestrated how he wanted to deal with this uh, ahead of time and it wouldn't have come down to the meeting. The fact of the matter is, is I was amazed, you know, for me, I was inspired that we had the meeting. Uh, I appreciated Anki bringing us to that meeting. And, uh, you know, ultimately, um, the meet, being there was unbelievable. Here we were in the president of the IOC's office, a matter of a couple of days before the opening ceremony. Um, so the fact that we got that far meant a lot, that the world was watching what was going on was extremely meaningful. But at the end of the day, it was really about Anki and Alana dealing directly on this issue. Um, and, uh, unfortunately I wasn't surprised when the meeting ended because as we know, uh, the meeting was strictly with Anki and Alana. We left. Uh, before the meeting, and um, it was no surprise because it was obvious that it was political, that he was a coward, uh, that the world, the world finally had stood up with Anki, Alana, and the families, and they stood up for justice for what needed to take place. So, uh, um, although it was a, an awful ending, it wasn't a surprise. Anki, the, he didn't last long in his, in his uh, position after the, the Olympic Games. It was a new election, and, and he was stepping down, and a new guy came in, Thomas Bach. Could you describe a little bit about your relationship with Thomas Bach and, and uh, what kind of guy he is, and, and, and how do you get along with him? Well, Thomas Bach, first of all, is a fencer. And my husband was a fencing coach. I'm a fencer. So I knew him. I saw him several times on world championships in fencing. So I knew who the guy was. And I played it out on the ethics of the fencing sport. You know, that you have respect for your opponent and respect for your referee. And that you, before and after your, your bout, that you shake hands and that you respect them. So I said, you have to respect our wish also. He is German, you know, which made it a little bit more complicated in my ways, in my eyes. But he was he is known as a fighter. And I said, I'm going to take him on. He is not a coward, and we're going to see if I can establish a, a re relationship. So I went several times together with Ilana too the headquarters of the IOC in Lausanne and trying to, to talk to him. And he is not an easy cookie, let me tell you this. He was, he was quite, uh, he's quite some, a little Napoleon, I call him. Also, very, when he's there, you know, you're a little Napoleon. And um, anyways, he had no choice. He, at one point, he, he said that, yeah, well, something has to be done. Not what we are asking, not in, at the opening ceremony, but he is going to do something. And we, I said, okay, I'm, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to do something because I do not want the same chaos that was there in London with your petition and with all these people calling and everybody getting into the, uh, from the President Obama to Ch Prince Charles to everybody else, you know, trying to, to convince us. I, this I don't want. He said, I said, okay, if you don't want it, then do the right thing. And Nobody will bother you, nobody will call you, nobody will fax you, whatever. So he did, and, and he came up that he's going to, to do this ceremony in the Olympic Village because that's what we wanted, Joe. We wanted it to be organized by them, not by the Israeli Olympic Committee or the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, organized by them, 
inside the Olympic Village and not in the Hilton Hotel in, in, in Beijing or in, you know, the backyard of the, of the ambassador of Israel in Athens or something, in the Olympic Village. And this is what he did. And he had a minute of silence in the Olympic Village. In the, a lot of uh, athletes were invited. There were thousands of athletes, also Palestinians, also Iraqis, also Iranians. They all came to that uh, to meeting. And I said to him, you made the historic step, but this is not what we want. We want it at the opening ceremony. He said, and I said, and if you do that, I, I, I met him just before the corona started because we wanted to know what he was going to do now in Tokyo. I'm, at this very moment, when we are speaking, I, I'm supposed to be in Tokyo because of the, the games were supposed to be there uh, on, but you know, because of the corona, they postponed it. But I, I went to ask him what he was going to do. And I said, if you do what I'm asking, if you're going to say at the opening ceremony, let's not forget what happened in Munich, you will never see me again. And he said, Anki, I don't believe you. <laughs> you will be back for something else. And I said, no, no, no. If you do it, if you do it, you will never see me again. I'm going home. Done. Finished. Mm -hmm. How long can I can I do this? You know, but I'll do it till till I get what I want. Aki, but you mentioned the the Olympic Games this year. What does the postponement of the Tokyo Games do to uh, your efforts? And and how does that impact the world uh, the world's attitude towards getting the minute of silence done? To tell you the truth, I thought about it, and I don't think, it, for me, it's a bad thing for us. Because, you know, we are getting closer to 50 years after Munich. And it, it, next year, when it's going to be on, they say on the 23rd of July in 2021, you know, just a few months later, it has been 50 years ago what happened in Munich. And I think it will be a, a, an extra push that I can bring him to the arena and tell him, you know, 50 years, don't you think you owe it now? Finally do the right thing, you know? So I don't mind. And, you know, I hope I'm still around because every year it's going on and on and on. And I, all, all the time I think I hope I can finish this work because I don't want <clears throat> to leave all the, the children of all these athletes with, you know, with work not done. So I want to finish it and I hope that next year it will be done. Okay. David, uh, it's almost 10 years, maybe about, about 10 years, that you've been involved in this effort, um, first with the JCC Maccabi Games and in memory of the Munich 11, and then all the support that JCC Rockland gave to the families of the Munich 11. What do you think you've learned in that decade? Um, I think I learned, and I learned from the best, being Anki and Alana, that you can never give up. 10 years compared to 50 years, I can't imagine what it would feel like to fight another 40 years. But, but, but frankly, when you have a just cause, um, it, it, it just becomes part of your DNA, who you are. And I think what what's, gives me a good feeling is that if you fight hard enough for the right cause, people will step up, maybe not as quickly as you'd like, but ultimately they step up. So, so for me, what's really been meaningful is that none of this would have happened for us if not for JCC Association and originally Lenny Silverman, uh, Silverman who um, worked initially established the relationship with Anki Spitzer, but uh, we have a new champion at JCC Association, uh, Jerome Krakow, who is the uh, CEO and president <laughs> of the organization. And uh, he's taken on the mantle for the national movement. And uh, he's met with Anki a couple of times now. Um, he was so impressed with the movie that he want, you know, unfortunately, as uh, we all know, uh, there was supposed to be a national conference in May where Anki would have attended in Milwaukee, uh, where the movie would have been shared with all JCCs around the country, which I'm confident will happen going <laughs> forward. 
But uh, we now have the entire movement and uh, others uh, it, behind Anki as well going forward. So, so I learned that there's no, no reason to ever give up. And uh, frankly, um, I believe uh, that even more now, if we look at what's going on in the world in which we live in today, um, injustice that takes place in the past uh, needs to be rectified whether it's 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, it's never too late to do the right thing. And I think it's an important lesson that we all need to learn, that our kids need to learn. And uh, I'm looking forward to next year in London. Joe, I'm hopeful uh, we've done our trips in July, uh, whether it be going to London in July or going to Israel in July. Uh, I would li like to believe that we can go to Japan in July next year and witness that minute of silence because the time is right and the time is now. Speaking of those three cities, and, and, and David, I, I hope you're right. I hope we're going. Uh, a local JCC, Rockland County, not, part, not in New York City, not, not in any other major metropolitan area, out here, uh, right up uh, 30 miles away from the Big Apple, you were able to put the JCC Rockland truly on the world stage. It really brought this organization and, 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 and the Rockland County community in an environment that, that it, it hadn't really been in ever before. We were for a short period of time, and I say we because I was standing with you many times, uh, truly in the international community, almost at the pincer head of, of the uh, entire, entire effort at that time. What did that feel like for your organization to be an international darling for a, a period of time? Listen, it was unbelievable. It was mind boggling. Um, couldn't have imagined when we started out that that's where we would end up. But that's why, um, you know, the bottom line is, is that if you believe strongly enough in something, you have to go for it. No matter what people say, um, you have to be willing to put yourself out there and make the effort. You may not get there 10 times in a row, but the 11th time you may get there. So I think uh, what it really says is if you have the right cause, you have to stand up for that cause and you can never give up. And that's the bottom line. All right, David. And I think one should never forget history because if you forget history, you're bound to repeat it. And that should be taught, told to the people that they should never forget history and learn from it. And that's what we're trying to do. But I, I, I do want to say something, you know, I, I want to tell you that I'm, not me, but all the families that we are extremely grateful to the JCC in Rockland, but also to the whole JCC organization, because like uh, David said, you know, Deron Krakow, he stepped in, stepped up to the plate and he is willing to come along with us and bring the whole JCC organization in, in the United States with him. It's unbelievable because we can never do it by, our, by ourselves. And I'm extremely grateful to you, Joe, for the beautiful film. I watched it again today. All the Hebrew subtitles are perfect. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> yes. hmm. But it, 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 you have done an incredible job of trying to, you know, to, uh, to tell the story and also to tell the story of a small community who, who stepped out of the box and came along and did something that we are forever grateful for. So, so Joe, um, yeah. you've been asking uh, a lot of questions. And uh, before we wrap up, I have a couple of questions myself uh, yes. for you. And uh, when, when we look at people who have stepped up, I remember the day in your office at Active International when you said to me, you know what, David, we ought to make a movie about this effort. And I'm saying to myself, what kind of a movie are we going to make? We don't even know what we're going to accomplish here. So, so Joe, tell me what would have motivated you to take on this project 
uh, as well as the first movie that was done, which was called 20 Million Minutes. And the name of that movie was for the fact that it had been 20 million minutes uh, since uh, the massacre in Munich, and all we wanted is one. Well, that's an interesting question. There, are, I like to think of myself as a storyteller. I like to uh, to describe what is happening and what's going on. So I like to make documentary films, and there are many things that I'm passionate about. And one of the things I was passionate about was the story of those eleven uh, athletes, referees, and coaches who were murdered in such a callous way on the world on the world stage. We all we all saw it. So when the opportunity came to tell a story and to be and to tell that story, <clears throat> excuse me, it was uh, it was it was highly motivating. Uh, we didn't know where we were going to get the money. We didn't know how we were going to go shoot this or what we were going to do. But the story and the passion that that it it inspired inside of me and made this a story I wanted to tell. Joe, what were some of the challenges you faced in making this movie? Well, the challenges in making this movie are similar to the challenges that you, you come across anytime you want to do a documentary. And that's one, you're an outsider. You're not, you haven't been in there. You haven't lived it. So the idea of getting close enough to the people who have lived it, or close enough to the story as in any way, shape, or form, uh, becomes the biggest challenge. How was I going to get uh, you, Anki, uh, who is now my dear friend, but you? there was a day where we didn't know each other. So how was I going to bridge that and, and have Ilana Romano talk to me and have all the other people who, who spoke and be able to cut through and get to the essential nugget of, uh, of what this story was. Joe, what, what endures from your years of being involved in this project? Well, David, it's very, it, it's very similar to what you said. I have learned a great deal of, uh, from a 50-year fight that uh, Anki and Alana and the others, led by uh, my dear friends Anki and, and Alana now, uh, in, in having this done. It seems so simple, but the mountain turns out to be so high to climb, and they climbed it on their own, mostly, going two yards at a time, three yards at a time, grabbing onto the rocks in front of them, continuing to go no matter how many times they've been pushed down. So if there's anything we want to accomplish in this life, look at Anki and Alana, who've never, never, no retreat, no surrender for them. They kept moving forward. And moving forward is what I came away with. Great. Uh, last question for you, Joe. What's next for you as a filmmaker? Well, we're working so, on. A besides, by the way, Joe, besides the uh, ending of the movie being the minute of silence in film. Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> I've been trying to do a movie about hunger for a long time, and every time I get deep into it, uh, the reality changes. It's a very different reality now on how to handle hunger in a COVID and post-COVID world um, than it was in a pre-COVID. It was hard enough in pre-COVID. Now in post-COVID, when people don't know where a dollar is coming from or a shekel is coming from, and people don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of days or months or weeks as far as getting food and housing and so on. So now... Uh, we're tackling that, but the, the ground changes a little bit on us. And uh, so the uh, film on hunger is the next one. Great. Well, again, uh, Anki, thank you so much for, for all that you and Alana have done in this fight uh, for justice and for right. And uh, most importantly, I think I'll speak for me and Joe. Uh, thank you for your friendship. Um, it's amazing how a cause can bring people together and how a friendship uh, can endure from that. So um, we in Rockland County appreciate you and uh, we stand united in support of justice still being served. And uh, the bottom line is, is whether there is a minute of silence or not, um, we, you and we have accomplished a great deal 
in making sure uh, that the memory of the 11 are never forgotten. Thank you, Anki, and thank you, Joe. Thank you, and thank to everybody who uh, watched tonight and everyone who uh, has paid attention to this subject matter. Thank you.